Lee, let's start off with how you came to the remake of The Invisible Man. So The Invisible Man was not a character that I was pursuing. Uh, obviously, it's a character I was aware of. Um, he, he's an iconic, famous character, but it wasn't something that was, you know, sitting in my heart, waiting to be made. It was suggested to me. I was at a meeting with some people at Blumhouse and Universal. They suggested this title, and pretty much instantly, from that very first moment that the title was suggested, I just had this idea of how you could modernise the character and make it scary again. You took it to such an interesting direction. You know, your point of view of telling it from the victim's point of view just really modernised it quite a bit. How do you think by using that really opened it up creatively? Creatively, excuse me. I think uh, by making the, the Invisible Man uh, film about the victim rather than the Invisible Man himself, you, you make it a lot scarier. I feel like there's something that happens if you know your villain too well, then you dilute his or her power. You know, you don't want to know someone too well. Human beings fear the unknown. So I wanted this version of the Invisible Man to be mysterious, um, unknowable, something that maybe was there, maybe wasn't there. So to tell that story, I have to focus on his victim, you know, so that the audience can live in the victim's shoes. And by telling that story in that way, I feel like you touched on a lot of relevant themes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the, um, so there, there are a lot of themes there in The Invisible Man. It's stuff that comes out unconsciously. Usually when I'm writing a story, I'm just focusing on scaring the audience or entertaining the audience. I'm trying to tell a good story, which is hard enough. But what always happens is these themes kind of bubble through. And they come through, uh, sometimes even if you don't want them to. And this movie seemed to me to be speaking to this situation that women can find themselves in where there is a partner who is stalking them or frightening them, or whether it's psychological abuse or physical abuse, this, this whole idea, it seemed like it, it, it wrapped perfectly around the metaphor of the invisible man, you know, a woman not being believed. And I had Elizabeth Moss as my collaborator on this, so she brought a really valuable female perspective on these issues. And every day on the set we would talk through the script and I would welcome her insight into like, you know, what she would or wouldn't do in a certain situation. And that I think is the sort of unsung hero of the film is Elizabeth's perspective on these issues, you know, that she brought to me. Oh, that's incredible. And just watching her on screen is just phenomenal to see her transformation. Can you talk about working with her? Yeah, uh, Elizabeth is obviously a hugely talented actress. Anyone who's watched TV in the last 10, 15 years knows what she's capable of. So it was a privilege to work with her and I came to work with her with a lot of, uh, you know, built-in fandom, you know, having been a huge fan of Mad Men and The Handmaid's Tale and everything else she's done. Um, but what I quickly realised as she was doing this film is that she doesn't bring any of that to work. Any, you know, any of her past work, she wants to start again. It's like she doesn't want to repeat herself or fall back on any tricks. She was constantly uh, pushing herself to do something different the way, the, in a way she hadn't done it before. And you worked with some really other great actors. You have Oliver, you have Storm. Can you talk mm -hmm. about working with them? Like your cast is incredible in this film. Yeah, the, I felt really lucky with the cast on this film. Um, not only Elizabeth as the central figure, but she's just surrounded by these amazing actors. One thing it does is it make you, makes you go home from a film set each day with a sense of achievement. You know, film sets can often be defeating places. You know, maybe you didn't make the day, maybe you didn't get that shot that you wanted. But um, on this movie, I always had this sense of accomplishment going home at night because of the actors. Because each one of them, Alda, Storm, you know, uh, Michael Dorman, Harriet Dyer, they're all such amazing performers that just pointing a camera at them feels like an achievement unto itself. So they, I feel like they own this movie, they, they are this movie. You know, I'm really thankful to them.